uh, Ariel. Welcome, Elodie and Jean-Pierre. Can you introduce yourselves? Can you tell us who you are, what you're learning, something about you? Maybe Elodie, can you start? If that's all right. I show, yeah, I can start. I show, my name is Elodie Lyons. Um, I am studying communication here at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, I'm here today because um, a big part of who I am is being Basque, um, specifically French Basque on my mother's side. Um, she moved here to the United States about 20 years ago from the um, La Purdi province, um, Bayon, Bayona. Um, and I still go back every year. Um, and when I learned that UC Santa Barbara offered courses on Basque culture and language, it was an extreme surprise because most of the time when I tell people that I am Basque, they have no idea what that is. So to see um, such an important part of who I am being taught here was of extreme excitement for me. Um, and I knew I immediately had to partake in it um, so that I could learn more about myself um, and about my culture because in France, it's very much more different than it is in Spain. Um, and a lot of us aren't as connected to our culture out there um, because of the government and the rules that are put in place. So I'm very happy to be here today and to be representing my family and my culture. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. A very nice story. And um, how about you, Jean-Pierre? Can you tell us about you, about your story? You also have something to do with the Basque Country, don't you? I certainly do. Kaisho uh, Beneri ni Jean-Pierre Echeverri nice. Uh, I also have a family from the Basque country. I have family coming from both sides of the border, uh, French Basque and Spanish Basque. My grandparents and great grandparents were from the Basque country. I'm a student here at UCLA in Los Angeles. And uh, I also had found out I had the opportunity to take Basque language and culture as a class. And I thought I can't pass up the opportunity to study my own language and culture and my heritage. Uh, at, while I'm going to college. So I thought it was an extraordinary opportunity to be able to do that. So I definitely jumped at the opportunity. Uh, it's very exciting to be able to learn uh, about Basque at you know, such fine universities. My sister went to UC Santa Barbara. She took the same courses there. She had a great time in those courses, which also inspired me to take these courses here. And so I'm very happy to learn more about our tremendous culture and celebrate uh, what our culture brings and upkeep the importance of the language and the culture and so it's very exciting to be here with all of you and very excited for this event well as you see we have uh, two very special guests with us today when uh we thought about uh, having this session history different talks that we're going to be having today. We said, oh, what would it be like to be Basque outside the Basque country? That was the question we asked ourselves. And in, your, in both your uh, cases, well, I think your um, stories are very interesting. It's really interesting for us to know, you know, um, without being in the Basque country, in your case, you're both in the US. Um, to have the opportunity to uh, learn Basque. I mean, Elodie, in your case, you've mentioned your family. And you you wanted to show your friends where you, your family comes from. And um, what did you think, you know, when you had this opportunity to take um, these courses on the Basque language and culture. Um, how did you feel? And um, how did you feel when you started taking that course without being in the Basque country? Um, what I felt when I first learned that this was being offered at this university was surprise. Um, because like I mentioned, when I tell people for the longest time, I told people that I, yes, I am French. And that's what I would tell people that I am French. 
And when people would ask me where specifically my family was from, I would say the Basque country. And outside of Paris and maybe Versailles, nobody knows what that place is unless they're very avid travelers or fans of the country. So when I saw that this course was being offered here, I was extremely surprised because, like I said, not many people know about it unless they know the country very well. Um, and it's just the ability to be in this class and learn so much about this culture has been really amazing. I feel like I'm being connected back to a piece of myself that I didn't even know existed, but in the back of my brain, I can't help but think about how happy my ancestors must be hmm. because um, with, with the diaspora and the spread of the Basque culture, we kind of got spread everywhere. So um, the ability to take this course makes me really happy and knowing that it was offered was really amazing because I feel like I'm connecting to who I really am and learning even more about myself through this course. Well, there's something that's uh, interesting for me. Um, because, you know, often when we are far away from a place, um, well, we don't know it very well. And, um, you know, when you started um, in this course, what idea did you have in your mind about the Basque country and Basque people? What, what was the idea you had before you took the course? Well, nothing but amazing thoughts before I took this course, because like I mentioned, I've been traveling to the Basque country since I was a baby. My first trip there, I was about, I want to say three months old, and I go every summer since. I even did primary school there for a few months. So before taking this course, my vision of the Basque country was nothing but amazing and so special. Um, I really loved how close knit the community is. That's something that I always seeked out because here in California, I'm from Los Angeles originally, we don't have a very big community of Basque people. So the only Basque community I had at home were, was my mom and I guess my American dad who loves the culture as well. But um, so I guess, yeah, I was, my vision of the Basque country was amazing because I had been so many times and I knew that there was nothing negative to say about it. And I, through learning this, I only learned more positive things, more interesting things about the country. So yeah, I had no bad view of the Basque country. They've always welcomed me with open arms. I mean, my family is Basque as well. So I guess I had to have a positive view of it. Jean-Pierre. We have asked um, Elodie a couple of questions. Um, um, what can you tell us uh, about uh, your experience? And um, what was your vision of the uh, Basque country before you took the course? I don't know if that changed over time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can identify with a lot of what Elodie said. I agree with a lot of what Elodie said, you know. Um, I did have a profound appreciation of my culture before taking this class. I feel like this class is only enhancing my appreciation of the culture, but I can kind of identify with, uh, well, I can definitely identify with what Elodie said about people not knowing where the Basque country is. We are such a profound people, but we are very little known throughout the world. A lot of people have no idea what Basque is if they're not from towns with big Basque diasporas, such as Bakersfield, where I'm from, or San Francisco or Boise. And so uh, my name being Jean-Pierre, when I, when I tell people my name, I go by JP usually. Uh, and then I, they say, what does that stand? This is inevitably the, how the conversation goes. What's your name, JP? What does that stand for, Jean-Pierre? Ooh, are you French? So that's a tricky question. So if I don't feel like explaining it to them because it can be a lengthy process, I'll say, yeah, I'm French. But usually what I'll say is, well, I'm actually Basque. And so then I try to enlighten them about what Basque is and they go, oh, I had no idea. So it is very exciting to be able to tell people what Basque is. I had a profound appreciation of the Basque country. I feel that I have a strong connection, perhaps not as strong as Elodie, you know, my grandparents were from there, but your mom being there, you definitely have a very strong uh, connection to the Basque country, I can tell. I've been there twice a long time ago. Uh, we have a lot of relatives, cousins over there, first cousins of my parents that live over there. So we stay pretty, it's a beautiful place. I have wonderful memories there. 
I had friends of mine last year, a bunch of friends of mine, friends of mine actually go to a Basque uh, learning camp in Gipuzkoa last year. And so they got the opportunity to do something that I'm exactly, exactly. And uh, uh, so when I found out I was able to do something quite similar, but over here, I thought it was pretty cool because I'm getting a similar experience to what they got, except not in the Basque country. But I'm very, I feel very lucky that we have this opportunity outside of, outside of the Basque country to bring um, the greatness and coolness of the Basque culture all over the world. So I'm very happy to be doing this. And the, the previous year, last year, we were talking about uh, someone from Bakerfield. His name was Dominic. And um, he was born in Bakersfield and he was a Basque teacher. And, um, you know, he was a Basque teacher who had been born in, in Bakersfield. And it's, it's funny, isn't it? For us, at least. It's nice to, to, for us to meet people that uh, are originally from the Basque country or have a connection with the Basque country. And it's, um, it's um, very exciting for us. And I have this curiosity. Um, do you know um, Basque cultural references? Do you know Basque uh, music bands, for instance? Do you, do you like them? Should I go first? <laughs> um, sure. I guess I'll start. Um, I other I don't like I know of the culture. I know of the dancing. I know of the music. Do I know how to actually do any of it? Partake in it? No. Um, I would only go for a few months at a time, um, and I still do. Um, now it's mostly weeks at a time. So I never really, as a kid, learned any of the cultural things like dance. My mom did. There's pictures of her doing traditional Basque dance as a kid, but um, I, I never spent enough time out there to do anything like like dancing or playing like an instrument. Um, so I, I am aware, very aware of everything because most of what I do every time I go to France, um, specifically Bayona, we have Bayonaco Bestac, which is um, in English, it's the festivities of Bayonne. And I've been going to that every year since I was a kid. And at least every time I could. And a big, very big part of that is a lot of cultural Basque elements like dance, like singing, music. Um, and so because of that, I do know quite a bit, but I've never actually been involved in any of it personally, but I do know it. And I would say that I could be able to identify it if I was, you know, given a picture or a song. Like I, we do listen to music at home very often. Um, like Aran Sadeak is a very popular one. <laughs> I know my parents like that one a lot, but um, yeah, I would say I know it pretty well. What about you, uh, Jean-Pierre? Because you've uh, said in your case that some of your friends were in a Basque learning camp. Not you, okay, some friends. Um, what can you tell us about uh, Basque uh, cultural references? Yeah, so I am uh, I'm a member of the Kern County Basque Club in Bakersfield. I've been involved for most of my life in various things. I've done Basque dance. I did Basque dancing for a long time. I'm in the Klika, the the marching band, Tropeta Ikin. You know, I play the bugle and the trumpet in the Bakersfield Klika. I've sang a little bit. I play a little bit of Chisvu. So I try to I've tried to dabble in a lot of different things. I love dance. I love music, especially singing. Um, and there's you know Basque music is so beautiful, and there's such a variety too. So uh, I've stayed pretty involved uh, with the Basque culture most of my life. I've tried to, you know, learn Basque just about in every way. I try to branch out in our uh, diverse and uh, very rich culture. And so the Basque Club in Bakersfield has definitely been a wonderful place to do that. We have a tremendous club. We have a tremendous Basque picnic. Uh, we incorporate almost every aspect of Basque uh, culture in our picnics. Uh, in our even and in some of our smaller celebrations throughout the year, Christmas, Easter, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, this, I played a little bit of handball when I was younger, never got great at it, but uh, I stuck with the music mostly. But 
I played pilota, I played a little bit of pala, you know, like I said, singing and music. So I've dabbled in a lot of that and all of it's so fun and so fulfilling and so great to do. And so a lot of my friends also that went to the Basque Country last summer, they have also been very involved, a lot of them from all over, but San Francisco, Boise, Fresno, Chino, all over California. And they've stayed, like me, very involved in Basque Country with their Basque clubs. And so those of us that live in towns with Basque centers with Oshkalachea, we're very lucky um, to have what we have because as Elodie said, Basque people really do stick together and we really make sure that we keep our culture. And it's really beautiful to see the way we do that. And so we're very lucky to have the foundation that those before us left to keep our culture alive in this country and all over the world. It's really astonishing to see. So I'm very lucky to be involved with uh, the Kern Country Basque Club. Jean-Pierre, I have to say that you do more traditional things than I do myself. Because, well, I speak Basque, I'm a Basque speaker, I'm a Basque person, but I am more concentrated on maybe digital stuff. And I don't dance, traditional Basque dances. And it's funny to see someone from California who, you know, <laughs> does more stuff than me. <laughs> no, I'm sure you're involved in a lot. You know, I think Basque people, Basque people are very humble. I think Basque people don't give themselves credit. I mean, I'm sure you know a little bit of, you know, dancing and singing and everything. Everybody knows, no one likes to give themselves a lot of credit. And so, uh, you know, I, you're probably just being too humble here, but uh, I appreciate you saying that though. I try to, uh, I've, like I said, I've tried to dabble in all the different areas of our Basque culture, but uh, I haven't done all of them. There's a couple that, you know, I'm trying to improve at, such as Basque, so you have the upper hand uh, of me on that. But uh, I think all Basque people are naturally very involved in their culture. And I think, uh, you know, we don't like to brag about it, but we all, I think, care deeply about our Basque culture and are involved in our own way. And I think it's very important to note that. So, but thank Can you I for- Can I add uh, on to that? Sorry to cut you off. I, yeah. I would totally agree, but so you're very lucky to be from Bakersfield, which has a very high population um, of the Basque culture, and so do other places in the U.S., like Idaho, um, but there's also, like where I'm from, I'm from Los Angeles, there is no Basque population here, and I think that combined with the fact that my family is from France and not the Spanish side, our culture is so it's not as large. And so I think that for me, that's why I felt so disconnected from my Basque side for so long is because from where I'm from and because of the side of the Basque country that I'm from specifically, I think that's part of the reason why I also didn't partake in dancing, in music, in singing. And I absolutely would have, but um, it's not as big in Los Angeles. I have never met another Basque person there in my life besides my mom even here at Santa Barbara, besides my professor, I have never met another Basque person in my life. And if I had been given the opportunity, if I hadn't Ushkwalechea, I would have totally taken part in that. But because it's so concentrated to just certain areas where there's a lot of Basque people, I didn't have that opportunity, which I feel like I lacked so much from not having that, but I'm catching up now with this class. Yes, I was going to ask you about that, but I don't know, Aneko, if you want to ask uh, something. Well, I had a question, but it has nothing to, to do with what we are talking about right now. Yes, um, concerning what Elodie just said. Yeah. Outside the Basque Country, and thanks to the Echetpare Institute, we have uh, Euskal Echeak, and for instance, Elodie and uh, Jean-Pierre's uh, teachers are Maitane and Iger. They're both Basque speakers in uh, Santa Barbara in, and uh, UCLA. They work as teachers there, and they teach a Basque language and Basque culture. And uh, well, it is thanks to people like them that uh, we can disseminate the Basque language and the Basque culture in, in other spaces, right? That go beyond the Basque country. And so 
Um, I had this question, but I think that Elodie has already answered it by the way. I was going to ask you what the impact uh, was in your area. I mean, uh, um, the fact that you have an Escalechea or um, or this course um, that is available um, for you, um, this opportunity to learn um, the past language. What is the impact of everything this um, has on you, I just, your area? Yeah, I feel like I have so much catching up to do. Like, I, like I've said, for the longest time when people asked me where I'm from, because my name is not very common here either. So when in school, um, elementary school, most of the time, when my name would be called, people would ask me, oh, you know, Elodie, where, where is that from? And I would say France. It is a French name, but um, my mother's maiden name is Aldai, which is a Basque last name as well. So I've always just felt, you know, being here, specifically in Los Angeles, where there's, I, like I said, I have never met another Basque person here besides my mom and my professor now. <laughs> but in Los Angeles, there, the effect of not having that culture is that I felt so disconnected from it for so long of my life. I mean, even my family on my mom's side, they they don't really, it's not a big part of who they are either. If you ask them, they'll say that, yes, you know, their last name is Basque and they would say that, you know, they are Basque, but they don't really partake in any activities. Um, and so the effect of being in Los Angeles where there is not a big Basque population or culture and being from Bayonne where the Basque culture is also, it, it's bigger obviously than Los Angeles, but compared to like San Sebastián Donostia, it's not big. And so the effect of that is that for so long I had no connection whatsoever to the Basque country. And I would not I would not say that I was Basque, but um, since taking this class and, and learning more, I would definitely say that that's who I am now. I've had a lot of conversations with my mom about it, um, where I spoke to her and I said, you know, your, your maiden name is Aldai, that's a Basque last name. And she would be like, oh, no, like I would just identify as French. And I was like, well, mom, if, if you compared yourself to another French person from Paris, you guys would have extraordinary differences in your culture. The French culture is not the same, and that's because you're from the Basque country. There's a lot of differences between us, um, but I guess just being so disconnected from it, it's made a lot of my family feel like they're not Basque or they're not adequate enough to be Basque. And for a long time, I felt that way too. Um, but since taking this course, it's making me learn more and be prouder to be Basque um, and to go every year and to be part of such an amazing place and such a strong and welcoming culture um, with so much history behind it. I'm more proud than ever since taking this class and learning even more about it. And have you um, can I ask my question, because it, it's like a hybrid question. In the past country and in the US, we play very different games. And I am a game lover myself. So this is why I'm asking you this question. Do you like past games? Euskal Kirolak? And uh, do you follow the, the sports in the Basque Country? Um, I don't know much about uh, football in the US, and I think that in Boise, they have the Broncos team. And apparently there's someone there that uh, has a blog or Basque people, where he um, tells all about what the Broncos do, whether they win or lose. Or um, so, I guess my question is: Do you have uh, any teams, any sports teams there, or can you tell us more about the the, the sports? Or do you watch Basque sports? Um, that could be another question. Um. So growing up. Um, we've definitely um, watched or gone to like pelota games. There's a lot of the, um, I think it's called a, 
I don't know what it's called, fronton? I think, uh, yeah, highlight, but like where they play it against. There's a lot of those everywhere. Um, so we would go see those very often as a kid, um, but it's kind of hard to access. I, I don't even know if they broadcast that here in the United States. Yeah, in, um, uh, in Orlando and uh, Miami, I think. Oh, yep. well, I've never been, but I do know there's a very big bass population there, but I've never been. So not I don't think I've seen that in California, at least not in Los Angeles um, or Santa Barbara. But I do follow rugby if we want to count that as a Basque sport. I know it's played very often throughout the European you know, area, but I that is something that I would say that we definitely do keep up with, um, at least where my mom is from. Everybody there are very they're very big rugby fans. <laughs> so if you count that, then absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jean-Pierre has left and uh, he'll be right back. But since we've got Elodie here, I what I wanted to ask you um, earlier on, you know, um, by listening to you, we we really see that you're willing to 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 recreate and build on that connection, right, that you have with the past country. You want to go deeper into that. Uh, have you? Um, ever thought to uh, stay longer in the Basque country, um, maybe to get to know the Basque culture better. Um, and I'm not just talking about uh, Basque dancers uh, and so on, right? I'm talking about more than that. Um, and that would require a longer stay in the Basque country. Um, so have you ever thought about that when you learn a little bit more Basque maybe later on in the future? Um, I have definitely thought about um, once I finished my undergrad here at Santa Barbara, um, gaining my um, upper, my grad school at anywhere in the Basque country or just abroad. I've specifically thought about the Basque country because I feel most at home there. It really is my second home. So um, it's definitely a very high likely that I will end up somewhere within the Basque country, whether that's Spain or France, to do my grad school for many reasons. It's cheaper. Um, and I have a lot of family there and the education that you get for the for the price is amazing. So and, um, like I said, I've really... Um, I don't feel at home anywhere other than the Basque country. Like if I were to stay in Paris, it wouldn't be the same. Um, so I've definitely thought about um, living there potentially. And I think that grad school would be the best place to do that because my parents have been urging me to go to grad school um, in France since I was born, just school in general. But I ended up at Santa Barbara and I am very happy, but I've definitely thought about staying abroad longer just to learn more and to experience a whole different way of life because it's very different than here in the United States. Is Jean Pierre recording in Tundesake? Jean Pierre, can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Yes. Parcato. Vale, igual Lorin, Jean Pierre, en Galderabat, porque onda incomunicado tata. We now have a question for uh, Jean Pierre. We just asked Elodie. Um, about, you know, the connection you both have with the Basque country and the Basque culture, um, not just because you're learning Basque, um, but also because you like the culture and uh, the music and, uh, of course, many other things. You, you also have a family connection. So my question is, have you, well, because you mentioned the, uh, Barnetegi, the Basque Learning Camp, have you ever thought that you could um, go uh, to the Basque country and participate in one of these Basque Learning Camps? And I don't know if you know it, but uh, the, there was this guy, his name was Dylan, um, who came from the UK, I think, and uh, who came to the, uh, the area of Lapurdi to learn uh, Basque. And he ended up having a YouTube channel in Basque, which is quite funny if you think about it. So, how do you how well, do you feel like you, you in the future you'll be coming to the Basque country to to stay for a while? Is Elodie 
mentioned that uh, she may um, come to the Basque Country to her uh, grad school, maybe, or Erasmus. What are your Certainly. thoughts about that? Certainly, I've definitely uh, considered that. I'm open to that. Um, friends of mine also intend to do something like that. The Basque Country is a beautiful place to be, a beautiful place to live. Uh, I know they have tremendous institutions over there, so that's something I would definitely consider in the future. Uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly what sort of career path I want to uh, proceed on, but I'm certainly open to going to the Basque Country to look into how to do that. So I'm open to doing that. I haven't get, given too much serious thought to too far in the future, but I'm definitely uh, open to that. A friend of mine wants to do, wants to study in France, and he's pretty adamant about that. So I look at options like that, and I consider um, things like that. So certainly that would be a tremendous opportunity to look at doing, and uh, I would be grateful for the opportunity to do that because, as Elodi said, I also feel like I would feel comfortable and at home in the Basque Country with all the family that I have. And just feeling the connection um, to that land that, you know, my ancestors, uh, where my ancestors lived. So uh, I would definitely consider doing that. And uh, Barkatu, uh, I do have class in just a few minutes. So I really thank you for uh, Barkatu, Barkatu. I do want to thank you guys sincerely for this opportunity. And so I'm going to have to get going. But thank you so much. This has been very fun. And I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre, for being with us and spending this time with us. Bye. It's been eh, great oso, oso having you. Thank you very much for uh, having me this eta time with us. Dia. Thank you very much for having me this time with us. So, we have, I see that we have some of our uh, uh, students here. Next, Bye. Kenneth. Okay, so we have a few students here with us. Thank you very much. In the chat, people are saying thank you to both of you, Jean-Pierre and Elodie. It's been great having you. We're very happy for you. Oh, and people seem to be saying that Mariela is translating with Julie. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Thank you very much. 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 Jean-Pierre needs to leave as well. Um, in any case, I don't know if you want to add anything, but if if um, you ever uh, come to the Basque Country, please call me. I will be in Iruña and I'll be very happy to show you the city. It will be a pleasure to show you around. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I guess just thank you for this opportunity of getting to be able to share my culture um, with all of you guys, because it's a very interesting situation that I have and that many of us have, like Jean-Pierre. Um, so this opportunity has been amazing. Um, and thank you to my professor for even thinking of putting me here. Um, it's been an honor to get to speak about something that's so important to who I am and um, something that I plan to carry on with me. <laughs> For the rest of my life. So um, I definitely, I'm leaving this summer to go back. I leave in the end of June, so I'll be there. <laughs> um, I don't know about Pamplona or Irunia, I've never been, um, but I do plan to go. Um, I mean, the running of the bulls is something that my dad has spoken about forever. <laughs> so we'll make it out there one day for sure. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate um, being able to talk to you guys about all of this and for you guys to listen so kindly. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Elodie.